Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange are doing political commentary for the media speaks. And friends, we're going to be bouncing around to a couple of topics today, but I, I definitely want to say a shout out to um, all, Angela and the other listeners that may have found us through her site. I don't know if anybody via Angela is repeatedly hitting the video, but now, now YouTube isn't like even recognizing them. So make sure when you watch it, leave a comment. That way it's easier for me to keep track of how many of you are actually catching the show because YouTube's being all screwy with the views. Um, check this out. Why you shouldn't feel white guilt over the Charleston shooting. Um, for one thing, I can't even believe I have to report on this. How in the world is somebody going to be responsible for everything of their race? That's like saying that I should have to apologize to um, innocent people in the Middle East that were blown up by Obama last term. I didn't, I didn't vote for Obama last term. I'm not going to be an apologist for America when I didn't vote for the person that did the bombing. I voted for Gary Johnson. By the same token, if some idiot goes on a shooting rampage and he happens to be white, why do I feel bad about it? I didn't do it. I think he's a jerk. I think he's an idiot. I mean, I, give him give him the life sentence if you want. Give him the death, death sentence even. Fine with me. I don't care what color the people he shot were. I don't care what his belief system was. He was a bigot. It's his God-given right to be a bigot. I'm dead serious. I don't think bigotry should be illegal. You're allowed to be a bigot. You're also allowed to be an idiot. And if you're a bigot, you are an idiot. When you hurt somebody, regardless of whether or not you're a bigot or not, you've broken laws, and we're going to punish you for it. I don't feel bad as a white person. I feel a little let down as a human being that somebody went into a church, a place of God. I am a Christian after all, although not a very good one. Um, he went into a house of God, my God, and shot nine people. I don't care if those people were black or not. I'm not a person that believes black lives matter. I'm a person that believes that all lives matter. Blacks included. Whites included. People. This is ridiculous. Paul Joseph Watson left us pounced on the Charleston shooting before the bodies were even cold to push their twin agenda of gun control and racial division. Liberals are hastily exploiting this tragic incident to fabricate the myth that there are armies of white people waiting to commit violent hate crimes against blacks. They're even advocating that only white people should be disarmed. We already covered that last show. An inverse of early racist gun control laws which targeted black people. Yeah, it used to be that blacks couldn't own guns. You know what? I'm not in favor of that. Why? Because our Second Amendment says that we have God-given rights. Not God-given rights if you're white. Not God-given rights if you're black. God-given rights. Doesn't matter what color you are. Salon.com said white America must answer for the tragedy. A somewhat different tone to how they responded to the Boston bombing for which Muslims didn't need to apologize. Yeah, did you hear about anybody saying that Muslim America needs to stand up against the Boston bombing? No. Apparently, white people, Paul Joseph Watson wrote, have suddenly become some kind of KKK version of ISIS. There's no wave of hate crimes being committed by whites against black people. And let me be clear, I'm glad that there isn't. I don't care what race you are. And I'll be even more honest, I make jokes about all races all the time. And I have absolutely no problem with people clowning me. I just had people clowning me for the last month. They called me Bullwinkle. They called me gay. Hey, Bullwinkle. Yeah, I can do it. They called me everything but a human being. That is their right to do so. When they started attacking my other listeners, then I banned them from the site. But you're allowed to say anything you want about me. You can call me a honky. You can call me a dago. You can call me a spick. You can call me whatever you want. That's your First Amendment right. When you cross the line and you harm somebody, then, of course, it becomes a different matter. Um, again, I, I don't care what color you are. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. 
But if it makes a difference to you, you are as much allowed to have it make a difference to you as I am allowed to have it not make a difference to me. And so long as neither you or I infringe upon each other's rights, then we still don't have a problem, even though we both think each other are idiots. It says, Justice Department statistics show that black people comprise 13% of hate crime victims, and that's a figure in line with their population number. White people comprise 65% of hate crime victims. From 2003 to 2006, black people comprise just 7% of hate crime victims. Unfortunately, black people are responsible for half of all homicides in the United States, despite the fact that they make up only 13% of the population. DOG statistics show that between 1980 and 2008, unfortunately, blacks committed 52% of homicides, compared to 45% of homicides committed by whites. You know what? None of that matters. Because there are white people and black people on both sides of that, because people do intermarry, who are crying about this. Loved ones died. I don't care what color you are when you kill somebody. If you do it, you killed somebody. It says, despite being outnumbered by whites five to one, blacks commit eight times more crimes against whites than vice versa. And again, I'm not attacking black people with these statistics. I'm fully aware that most serial killers are white. Almost all of them. Don't give me Resendez Ramirez. I get it. Most serial killers are white. That's true. So, I mean, I'm able to give it to my own race, too, because I don't really care. I agree with Hank Hanegraaff. We have one race. One race is noted in the Bible. That is to run the good, fight the good fight and run the race till the end. Um, it says, in addition, the number of blacks killed by other blacks vastly outnumbers blacks killed by whites. And this is absolutely true. So am I saying that black people need to apologize for black America? No, because that's a stupid thing to say. What I am saying is that it's time for us to realize that this is being used as a point of division. How can I prove it? By everything that I had just said in the last seven minutes. Um, guys, we're going to get away from this topic. I covered it Saturday because we had to. It's a major news story. Now, The Correct Views, my show, has addressed this. We are going to move on because I really am so sick of the race thing. I can't believe it's 2015 and we're still talking about right, whites. Maybe that's because I'm a stupid dago. Friends, Kurt Nemo, PrisonPlanet.com. Greeks refuse to pay debt, declare it illegal, illegitimate, and odious. This is very good because... Greece has been hosed by getting into the European Union. For those of you that don't know, the European Union is pretty much what Hitler wanted to do with Europe in terms of consolidating power into a mostly German figurehead. Fortunately, the people in Germany now are not fascists. They are, you know, they're, they're part of the democratic world that we live in. I get it. I'm not saying they're fascists. I'm saying that non-fascists did the same thing by creating the European Union that Hitler, who was a fascist, wanted to do. Was it a bad idea when Hitler wanted to do it? Yes, it was. Because it creates pockets of poverty, if you will. It is a bad idea. So even though the people that are doing it now are not fascists, it is still just as bad as an idea as it was when old Adolf wanted to do it. That is why fascism doesn't work. That is why he was wrong before he ever killed his first Jew, which made him even more wrong. Fascism is not about killing Jews. I wish everybody would wake up to this. Fascism is a corporate federal mindset that has nothing to do with killing minorities. That is one aspect of a very big picture. And the very big picture is one that leads to things like this. A committee formed by Speaker of the Greek Parliament, who unwisely joined the EU, and Syriza member Zoe Constanta Paolou, it looks all Greek to me, has released a report stating that the debt the IMF and the Europeans insist the people of Greece owe to the bankers is illegal, illegitimate, and odious. 
Uh, dear Christelle, please put the air on. This studio is burning up with these stage lights. Here is the conclusion from the report. All the evidence we present in this report shows that Greece not only does not have the ability to pay this debt, but also should not pay this debt. First and foremost, because the debt emerging from the Troika's arrangements is a direct infringement on the fundamental human rights of the residents of Greece. Hence, we came to the conclusion that Greece should not pay this debt because it's illegal, illegitimate, and odious. And this is what central banking brings to a nation. And again, were some of the Greeks greedy, like Americans? You know how you always got to rack up that credit card to get that new big screen TV. Got to rack up that credit card. God love Christelle. She's not happy unless she's spending, but she's not a credit freak. Um, I'm talking about credit freaks. Spend, 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 even if you don't even have it. Um, yeah, of course they did that. But what's one of the things that made that possible? This notion of fiat money, this notion of um, the European Union, all grouping everyone together. They had their own currencies for reasons. Okay, the, the drachma has clearly worked better for Greece than the euro. Even when the drachma crashed, it says Zero Heads writes that this has just thrown a very unique wrench into the spokes of not only the Greek debt negotiations, but all other peripheral European, nation, European nations. Greek negotiations, who will promptly demand that their debt be likewise declared odious and made null and void, thus washing their hands of servicing it again. It says Eurozone bosses will now attend an emergency meeting in Brussels and discuss the crisis. The Troika will promptly attempt to seize Greek assets or take it to the Hague. Reactions so again, everything goes through the Hague. Reactions will likely prove to be futile. Clear everything with the Hague. Clear everything with the Hague. No sovereignty for Greece. Let's get into the European Union. It says the, the refusal to pay the IMF will undoubtedly lead to Greek's exit from the Euro and the European Union. Of course, that's why this segment is called the Grexit. I hope they do it. I, the, the sooner they can get the hell out of this, deal with the shambles that it created, and then build themselves up again, the better. Because remember, we're talking about the cradle of democracy here. And again, for those of you, I, want, I couldn't find my sunglasses. My eye is bothering me for some reason. It's bright red. I wonder how many people, no matter how much news I give, the only thing they're going to notice is, hey, Sam's eye is so bright red. You watch. I guarantee I'll get some comment like that. Nobody will talk about the Grexit. Nobody will talk about, you know, the, the child molestation story from ISIS I'm about to get to. No, no, they're going to talk about my eye being red. I swear, watch it, watch it, it'll happen. Sputnik News, Greece eyes involvement in BRICS Bank. And we're going to move past Greece and banks here in just a couple of stories. So I scan ahead if you must, but this is stuff you're going to want to hear. It's a short article. This is Sputnik St. Petersburg. The Greek government is considering... Whether it could get involved in the BRICS New Development Bank, Greece's Minister of Economy, Infrastructure, and Shipping and Tourism, Georgos Stratikis, told Sputnik Wednesday, We are fully supporting the BRICS initiative, and we are investigating ways for Greece to get involved in this initiative that could be beneficial to both sides, the minister said. A source in the Greek government told Sputnik in May that Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras is likely to discuss his country's membership in the NDB with BRICS leader St. Petersburg on June 18th to the 20th. What's this mean? It means that they're losing faith in the European Union. Unfortunately, they're about to get themselves into another union. Why are we seeing so many nations that cannot just be themselves? What do I mean? Most of the problem in the freaking Ukraine has to do with the average Ukrainian. I need to be Russian. I need to be Russian. Or the other half, I need to be part of the Europe. I need to be part of the European Union. You know what? Why don't you not and just be Ukrainian? Stupid bastards. I'm sorry, but it's the same thing here. Um... Why do you need to be part of BRICS? Why can't you just be the sovereign nation of Greece? 
says the five major de developing economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South America, bill their venture as an alternative to the International Monetary Fund, which is one of Greece's three main creditors, to which Athens owes $1.7 billion repayment by the end of this month. Friends, this is what you get. You subscribe to a one-world view, and or at least a one-continent view, and look what you get. You get the survival of the fittest. You get everything that most people think will happen with anarchy. No, it happens with anything but anarchy. Oh, my God. Um, the last one I'm going to get to here, it's just another reason not to bank. It's not so much about Greece as it is uh, another reason to not bank. And do you want to know how to not bank? Go to How to Live Without Banks. It's an article on TheMediaSpeaks.com. And I'm going to be updating it because... Uh, because of uh, the house, house that I'm going to be renting, I had to open a uh, LLC. So I'm going to open a bank, but I'm about to update this article to show you exactly how I don't use it for anything other than just to keep it open enough to keep the people happy that make me have a bank account. I am still not going to bank. Why? Here we go. Banks demanding customers account for every deposit and withdrawal before offering mortgages. How about I uh, I, I can uh, demand that the bank kiss my rosy little white ass? How about that? I like that better. Um, banks are beginning to demand that customers account for every deposit and withdrawal in their account before they can obtain a mortgage. Another illusion of how capital controls and pulls down the middle class are intensifying. Quote, my sister just bought a house and to get the mortgage... She had to explain every deposit and cash withdrawal in her account going back five years. My mother had simply written her a check for $400 to reimburse her for picking up some medicine. They wanted her to explain why my mother gave her $400, writes economist Martin Armstrong, adding that his sister was also grown on the $2,000 she withdrew a few months to pay for incidental purchases. How many of you realize that this is none of the bank's damn business? There is a Fourth Amendment in this country. For those of you that don't know what it is, I'm not surprised. Um, you don't need to account for what you do if you've done nothing wrong. And you are presumed innocent until proven guilty, at least on paper. So why, 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 why would anybody bank at these places? Another of Armstrong's friends who shared an apartment with her girlfriend was also forced to account for five and a half years worth of rent checks that she had written her before she could get her mortgage together. So basically, if you can't account for every single penny, then you don't you don't get the uh, you don't get the loan, you don't get the help. You know what? Don't bank because this is what happens when you do. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Got three more stories left, including this disgusting ISIS pedophilia story. But I wanted to get to two things before we move on. One is sticker junkie. Um, I, you know what? I'm a good artist. I'm decent. I made these logos. It's great. Look what David Lake at Sticker Junkie did to them. If you like passing time, by the way, you know, you make sure you let me know the correct views at Hotmail.com. This is what Sticker Junkie does, friends. They make the best stickers you've ever seen. And let them know in the comment line, uh, attention David Lake, let them know when you place your order at StickerJunkie.com that you heard about it from the correct views and uh, you'll get an amazing discount. Moving on to the disgusting ISIS story uh, brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. While he is not disgusting in any way, shape, matter, or form, he is a wonderful uh, help to the show. He's one of our advertisers. I'm so happy to have a writer as an advertiser. I really am. Um, go to Mike McLaughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, and uh, you'll find short stories, poetry, political rants. Some of the best fiction being written today is being written by Mike McLaughlin. Um, and uh, his, his financial help uh, pays for me to do this and bring you really depressing stories that you need to know about. Report! ISIS leader encourages pedophilia. Now, this is dated June 3rd. I thought for sure that this was going to get so much attention that I wasn't going to have to cover it, that it was so vile and so disgusting then it would go without saying. And again, most people would consider me a freak sexually. I will just leave it at that. Um, I'm not gay or bi, but, you know, got two women on a couch. Yeah, you got me watching. You know, I, I, I regular guy perv, I admit it. There are some things that 
even somebody with a very long sexual leash, such as I would imagine I have in my own head, if not <laughs> nothing else, um, there are some things that are so unbelievably disgusting that you don't even want to report on them. And this is one of them. There's nothing about this that's sexual. There's only something about this that is sick. Tells jihadists to enjoy young boys in the absence of women. I swear to God, I don't know why no one has covered this. Abu Bakar al-Baghdadi, perhaps the worst piece of human filth on the planet today, at least with any power, the Caliph Ibrahim, Ibrahim of the Islamic State reportedly tweeted that it is permissible for jihadists to enjoy young boys in the absence of women. Another shocking insight into the warped beliefs of ISIS. Yes, right. Put your member into the back door of a small child when women aren't around. That's why when people join ISIS, I have no sympathy for them. Because they're not hiding who they are. They're showing everybody exactly who they are. They're, they're, they're molesting children and bragging about it, and people would still join them. If you do that, I have no sympathy for you. Al-Baghdadi's Twitter account was suspended last year, but the screenshot of the tweet has reemerged after being posted by a number of Arabic-language websites in recent days. According to Jihad Watch, the translation of the Arabic reads, It is permissible for the Muhajid Jihadi to enjoy young boys in the absence of women. The message is justified with a reference to the Quran, 5224, which states, there will circulate among them servant boys, especially for them, as if they were pearls well protected. This reminds me of Caligula, which is another disturbing, disgusting story, unfortunately. We got good news after this, I promise. Um, Caligula, which means Boudicans, by the way. It was a derogatory term, and I'm glad he's remembered by it, and you will be happy as well when you hear this. Caligula, among other disgusting acts, used to hire small boys who could swim to swim between his legs as he was getting his bath, nibble on his member and swim away. Caligula. This, uh, I have to hearken back to something like this before I can find any story relatable to this. I mean, we were just talking about how disgusting Nazis were. Even Nazis, even that, like the ultimate filth never uh, pushed something like this. Verses 76, 19 also read, They will circulate among them young boys made eternal. Yeah, that's a good word for molested. When you see them, you should think of them as beautiful as scattered pearls. Oh, that's just so beautiful. Let's put a beautiful rose on a turd. It's sick. Unsurprisingly, al-Baghdadi is the figure who attracts controversy on a regular basis. Last year, he was ridiculed for being photographed wearing an expensive $5,000 Omega wristwatch. Oh, but I hate the West while I'm molesting children. A manual released by the publishing house for the Islamic State last year also includes graphic instructions on how to beat and sexually molest female slaves, including underage girls. It is permissible to, permissible to have intercourse with the female slave who hasn't reached puberty. That means not even having a hair. <sighs> Friends, this is terrible. Hasn't even reached puberty if she, if she, if she is fit for intercourse. Well, how in the hell is somebody that hasn't reached puberty fit for intercourse? I don't care if Mohammed slept with a nine-year-old or not. It is permissible... It is, it is permissible to do about anything, I guess. It says, Jamie Detmer explains ISIS also re relies on te techniques used by ped pedophiles to groom underage prey when recruiting young Westerners. 
ISIS blames conspiracy theories about the origin of the group as a reason for why many militants have deserted the terrorist organization. Now, nothing to do with the fact that your leader, you know, is promoting raping children. Good Lord, I'm glad that story's over. Little bit of good news here. Onlookers expect the worst as they watch a state trooper pursue an elderly woman in an electric scooter. And the officer story inspires the commuter uh, community. It's one of the anti dumdies that I've started before we get to the dumdy of the day next. And this is Eva, I think it's De Decaser. It's Free Thought Project. To onlookers in Linden, Washington, it might have seemed like the world's most absurd police chase. A state, troop, a state trooper's cruiser, red, white, and blue lights flashing in hot pursuit of an elderly lady on her electric scooter. Both vehicles were cracking, were crawling down the state route 546 at about 6 miles per hour. In reality, it was state trooper and anti dumdy awesome trooper Dave Hintz doing a good deed providing a woman in her 80s with a police escort home after she had become lost. When asked, Trooper Hines made it a point to emphasize that his goal was not to detain her, but it was to help her get back home. I just treated her the way I would have wanted somebody to treat my mom, he explained, sounding remarkably human. Even at a scooter's top speed, escorting the woman back home took over an hour because she had accidentally ended up several miles from her home. On the other hand, we should commend the trooper for his service to the community. On the other hand, it should also probably be commended the elderly woman for keeping the state trooper busy for an hour, during which he wasn't available to write tickets to collect revenue for window tint, seatbelt violations, and other victimless crimes. In any case, we commend Officer Hines for protecting and serving the correct way. Uh, way to go, my friend. Salutes from the correct views. My question, though, is... Why didn't you put the old lady in the cruiser, put the scooter in the trunk, and it would have taken about 10 minutes? Just a thought. But that's not the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. No, and I have to call it back up here real quick. The dum dee of the day goes to the, uh, the, the, the people that almost got arrested for cheering. No, I'm not kidding. Arrested for cheering. At a graduation, no less. When my brother graduated a number of years ago, they instructed everyone not to cheer. Why don't you just shut the hell up, know that everybody is going to cheer, and make time allowances for that? Why? Because you're stupid. Am I talking to Mr. Andaloro from Timken High School? Yes, that's exactly who I mean. He's an idiot. Family threatened with jail for cheering graduating relatives. $500 fine for expressing support. A family in Mississippi who needs to tell the authorities to go to hell are facing a court hearing and possibly even jail for cheering their loved ones on at a high school graduation. Yep, that's why, as you can hear, they're getting the dum dee music here. Uh, just unbelievable that we're dealing with this kind of stupidity. WREG reports that the parents and aunt of 18-year-old Lanaricia Walker were ejected from the ceremony and later issued arrest warrants for shouts of encouragement. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we, you know, when, when uh, kids don't graduate, especially, uh, unfortunately, African Americans, everybody talks about how awful they are. Here's a girl did a great job. She's got people cheering for her. That's wrong, too. Charges of disturbing the peace were brought by Senatobia Municipal School District Superintendent Jay Foster, who bemoaned not having order at graduation ceremonies. So why, why do I do these videos, people? Why do I do them? I do them so that you'll contact Jay Foster, who is superintendent of the Senatobia SEN. A T O B I A municipal school district, and let him know that you think of what, what you think of this. The control freak superintendent claims that all in attendance were warned not to shout out or clap until the end of the ceremony, otherwise they would be thrown out. Well, then you know what? Stop announcing that, you stupid sob. I can understand they can escort me out of the graduation, but to say they're going to put me in jail for it, what else are they allowed to do? Said the aunt Ursula Miller. God bless her. 
It's crazy the fact that I would have to be bonded out of jail, pay court costs, or a $500 fine for expressing my love is ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous, Henry Walker added. God bless him, too. Tell them to go to hell and don't you pay a single penny. The family says they cannot afford to pay the $500 fine, so it's possible that they will be thrown in jail. Why assign papers on anyone? We don't have money for anything like that, Linda Walker said. You know, and it's another reason that maybe you want to look into the Ron Paul homeschooling thing, because I'll tell you what, it's getting to the point where, where it's been to the point. I mean, I'm, no, I'm not a spring chicken, and I can tell you for sure it was a load of BS when I went. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. If you're listening to this show, then you must not have been brainwashed, brainwashed by your education. That's good to hear. For those of you that have been brainwashed, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm fixing it for you. You can donate to the show. Go to the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. We're looking forward to getting this the graphics up and running. Also, make sure you go to the mediaspeaks.com. Look up the works of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are posting all of the time. And uh, you can support the work we do by hitting share, hitting subscribe, donating, and uh, letting other people know we're out here. Good night, friends. God bless.